Hello, you guys. Welcome back to the What We Said podcast. Happy Tuesday. Today is football <laughs> week here at the What We Said podcast because we have a very special, beautiful, glowing guest, Miss Allison Cooch. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for coming. That was a great introduction. Oh, thanks. <laughs> We're like, not going to tell them anything else about you. Um, <laughs> you guys you, know. You guys know. She needs no introduction, but... We're excited to get into lots of stuff today. We were just talking for 30 minutes. Leif was setting up the cameras. We couldn't stop <laughs> stop talking. So we're ready to get into lots and lots of stuff. First of all, how's Scotty? How's the postpartum life currently? Love Scotty. She is like the light of my life. Um, it's crazy. Like seeing her smile. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm happy for the day. Uh, but aside from that, postpartum has been a lot rougher than I expected. And I was like, oh, pregnancy for me was a breeze. I know it's not for you, Chelsea. So no, it's, it's okay. <laughs> triggering you. I'm like, it was great. <laughs> I want to be pregnant all the time. But um, yeah, pregnancy was great and like never got sick. And then birth was great. And then postpartum, like two weeks after birth, it was like, oh shit. So now it's been yeah. a little rough, but it's okay. We're <laughs> thinking anxiety meds today. Woo! Love that. <laughs> I feel like everyone has like one out of three, between, I think we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. or is that like a, not a statistic, but something that people say is like between pregnancy, birth and postpartum, like usually one of them is, mm -hmm. it's it's unlikely that everything's just going to go absolutely perfectly. So it's usually yeah. like one of them is kind of rough. So I think you need I don't know. one rough part to kind of help you through the tran transition into motherhood. So it's yep. like, for me, I was just so happy pregnancy was over. Like mm -hmm. when I gave birth, I was like, this is the best day of my life. So it was like, you either have to go through it when you're pregnant, like, oh my gosh, I'm so like physically, this is crazy. Or your birth is crazy. And you're just like, oh my gosh, one of them has to be hard for you to be like, <laughs> okay, my life is changing. You yeah. Know? I kind of agree with that because when I got home from the hospital and like I had not had my colon infection. Um, but oh, when, no. I, when I was home from the hospital, I was like, wow, like that was like, it went so quick. Like I was pregnant. It was great. I went into my C-section. It was great. Mm -hmm. Like recovery. Great. And I was like, Oh, like I have a human. <laughs> and then shit hit the fan. I was like, Oh, okay. We're transitioning. So. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Oh, there's going to be, yeah. Something hard about something <laughs> yeah. at some point. I feel like with all of that, I, I want to get like way more into postpartum and motherhood and stuff, but let's kind of like rewind a little bit. Um, let's say that to the end first and of all, on a depressing note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> we were going to make you guys sit through the whole episode yeah. to listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, first of all, people are like, how do you guys know each other? I, don't know. <laughs> I couldn't remember how, how we met initially. I have. No social media, but like. I think it was just social media. But I mean, like, just through like mutual friends? Meet up for the first time. I oh, I think it was a Pilates class. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Wait you're, were you? <laughs> it's not working. Did you just pull that out? <laughs> I think you had to push that silver thing in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hello, hello. Who knows how long that's been? <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry if there's literally no audio. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I think you're right. I think it was Pilates, and then maybe we went on some, like, walks. <laughs> Sorry, I am so unprofessional. <laughs> if you want to restart, we can. I, I think I think it it couldn't have been off the whole time. I think I just pulled it out. <laughs> yeah, and then I think we went on some like walks. Yeah, and then we went on the aloe moves yep. trip. How Brain far trip. along pregnant were you at that point? Uh, I announced when I was fifteen weeks. Okay. So I think sixteen. I think that was a week after. That was pretty soon after. You yeah, announced. I was wondering now that I'm pregnant I'm trying to like line up. understand yeah I'm like oh You're yeah like, oh, Allie yeah. Pregnant. I'm way smaller than Allie was <laughs> no I was more thinking you were literally thriving and glowing and I am not yet so um but yeah so we did that we just had random stuff but yeah it was through social media yeah I feel like met. Orange County is like a like the influencer whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it I feel like it the like group is kind of small or like you know a lot of other Orange County people who like do social media it's true yeah it's it not is. like LA. I remember when yeah. I, many. well, you've actually, maybe when I followed you, you did not live here. I don't remember. You've lived a lot of, <laughs> you, were, you were moving <laughs> a lot, a of, lot of places. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, what we were wanting to ask you actually with social media, when did you start posting? Did you pull up from TikTok 
Is that what, yeah, where it talk. all happened? Mm -hmm. From posting about like NFL life? Yeah, I I think I, I posted like a day in the life or like me being with a NFL player because I was like, oh, people think that's interesting. And oh my God, the haters came for my throat. So I was like, oh, instead of responding like, oh my God, no, that's not true. I'm a very sarcastic person. So I started responding very satirical mm -hmm. in a satirical way. And then that's when it kind of grew from that. That makes sense. I feel like you did lean into like yeah. the joke I feel like, of it. Yeah, I feel like in the first like year or two on TikTok, I definitely was very like, oh, gold digger, like day in the life, spending my husband's money. And I feel like now it's been, I definitely <laughs> sprinkle that in, but I think now it's more like, hey, this is actually just my life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you gotta just Go with dig in. <laughs> yeah, dig in, lean into the joke. I, I feel like that is- that's what the most successful people I know do mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. like literally play into all of it. Yeah. It and then with like the jokes, I started to reveal more about my actual life. And then people were like, oh, okay, she's funny. She's <laughs> like, actually, maybe they don't we'll think stick that. around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, mm. well, I feel like you also do share very like vulnerable stuff too mixed in there, which is probably why people like mm -hmm. relate to you. Cause, yeah. cause your lifestyle isn't necessarily relatable being with an NFL player and you know, right. but you also show, I feel like the, hardships of like, oh, we have to move. And like, he got yeah. released, like things that maybe people, other people wouldn't share. There's a very, like, you have to walk the line between like, I have to walk the line of showing my life and like the sad moments, like the moving, like complain about that stuff. But I can't complain too much because people will be like, oh, you're too rich to like have a sad life mm -hmm. or your life is so great. Like I'm over here doing X, Y, and Z, which totally, like, I definitely don't have like this horrible life, but I can still go through hard things. And I think that's where I have to walk the line of sharing, not oversharing, but I don't have a relatable life at all. Cause yeah. like not a lot of people are in the NFL. So well, yeah. I'm not in the NFL, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, my husband. But that's what's, we were just talking about, um, like some people that we follow that get a lot of hate for, for like portraying an unrealistic life. But it's like, that is, what's interesting about life is that there are people yeah. who do all sorts of things mm -hmm. and a lot of it is unrealistic to you personally, but that's what makes it fun to watch. Like that's why I like social media. Yeah. I'm like, I'm watching nurse content. Like I'd never want to be a nurse. I'd never thought of like blood scares me. Like that's not my forte, but I like to watch the content. Yeah, so I feel exactly. like if people all made relatable content, I feel like you wouldn't want to watch. It wouldn't be interesting. Just watch fun. someone else live the same life you're living like right. every day. That would be Freaky. Yeah, social media boring. is kind of in a weird place right now where I see a lot of people saying like, oh, you're not relatable anymore. I'm like, that's fine. Then just unfollow them mm -hmm. and go and follow somebody that you like more closely, like like their content or whatever. Vibe yeah. with. Yeah. yeah. I think there need like, and this is everybody's own responsibility for who they're following. It's like you can fo follow a balance of people who make you feel, you know. Right. Related, you know, you can relate to them and it validates your feelings. Then also you can have, a plethora of other content creators that you follow that do completely different things than you. It's, it's yeah. and it's all, it it's all how it's presented too, because again, I think like your kind of satire or satirical approach to all of that is, I don't know, you're, you're, it makes you more likable in my opinion and like mm -hmm. more relatable because you are just kind of showing everything all across the board. But again, yeah, people are kind of, in charge of who they follow and what they, yeah. if they don't like it, then it's, they just need to not follow. <laughs> just you know? don't follow me. I feel like the outward perception of an NFL wife is like very bougie, like spending a lot of money, staying at home with the kids, which there definitely is that. And that like some people just make a lot more in their NFL contract, but I don't think people have ever seen an F NFL player that might not be in the higher end of contracts. So we live a little bit more of a humble life compared to like Tom Brady. Like yeah. how right, much has right. he made in his career? I have no idea. So I feel like people don't really get to see that aspect because on so like on TV, you're not looking at like a, I'm not going to say mediocre. That sounds really bad, but like you're not looking at somebody who is, I don't know. Like Just lives living. a more normal life than yeah. like yeah. these superstars who are like right. mega, mega famous. Yeah, yeah, we see like the six superstars of the NFL and their right. lives and they're on commercials all the time and blah, blah, blah. So, it's, yeah. but there's so many people that play in the NFL. Right, like ESPN's not like, oh, here's a guy who's like made it to year seven, yeah. but like been on minimums every year. Like, let's do a story on him. Like, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. don't, they're not that doing that. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what's kind of cool about social media is that it gives the opportunity to 
for people to like right. share their lives and their stories when, you know, they're maybe not going to get coverage otherwise, but yeah, I love it. I just feel like you and Isaac are just, ugh, you're such a good duo. And I feel like it's very clear also, which is probably why you guys are so successful. Like, um, just that you guys are friends, like you're oh, good yeah. for your best friends. Mm-hmm. And I feel like just your banter and your vibe together is just, I just love it. I, I think that's the t- best type of relationship is like being each other's best friends. Because I mean, how long have you guys been together with your husbands? Like, like eight, eight years. years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Isaac and I met when we were 19, we've been together for nine years and I'm like, above all else, he's definitely my best friend. Like mm-hmm. we were joking the other day, like we could just never get divorced because we're best friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't really talk about divorce. That often, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it gets down to a point where like you definitely go through ebbs and flows of your relationship. But at the end of the day, like he is my best friend. So if I have a good day, I want to talk to him. If I have a bad day, I want to talk to him. If he's pissing me off, I still want to be like, God, Isaac pissed me off. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because it's just like your person. Yeah. I love that. My favorite thing to say to Nick when he's bothering me is, you're really bothering me today. <laughs> and then he says it I once I say you're pissing me, me off. <laughs> yeah. Like, you are really bothering me today. He's like, Chelsea, if I said that to you, I'm like, I would be in a puddle. I'd be like, what? No, literally. If Isaac ever said that, like, pray for him. Yeah. yeah, it's a double standard and I stand by that. Absolutely. I'm okay with that. Oh, 100%. If Leif does the slightest, like... <laughs> He, I feel like he is just such a like sweetie that if mm-hmm. he does anything that's like <laughs> even remotely sassy, like this is I'm in like, character for you. Yeah, yes. I'm like, whoa, what are we doing here? Like, this is really interesting. He's like, what? <laughs> um, like, I'm literally perfect, yeah. except for the comment it just made. Exactly. How okay? How do girls find their Isaac? Let's get into how to how to train your husband because <laughs> Isaac posts a lot of content. Like, I guess you should kind of explain. I feel like some of the content he's been posting lately is like about the mental load of like, right. like carrying the mental load in a relationship and being like, I'm going to like make these soups and freeze them for when she gets where stuff like that, where girls yeah. are like, They're like, where did like, you get Yeah. Him? Is where he on some kind man? of forum? Did he take classes <laughs> yeah, or did you saw, train him? He's on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, linked on my Amazon store friend. Yeah. No, but, um, it's crazy because we grew up together. So when I first met Isaac, he was actually not a very emotional person. And that's something that always bothered me because I'm a, like, Growing up in my household, like you cried when you were sad, you laughed, whatever. And Isaac just, I I guess he grew up in not a non-emotional household, but he just didn't know how to like portray his emotions or like he wasn't super lovey-dovey. I don't know like what changed in him, but I feel like when we got married, it was more like, okay, now we're a family, we're a unit. How somebody can find an Isaac, I just don't lessen your standards or like don't lower your standards because there's somebody out there. Like the person that, you're trying to make who you want them to be is just like, he's a lost cause. Like it's so this true. is your sign ladies, like get rid of him. Yeah. Um, but I feel like you also have to invest in your relationship. So if somebody is not apt to like, or like open to change, I feel like I'm contradicting myself. I'm like, don't change a man, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's a great point. And I think that that is, um, it's hard to, you can't teach this, but and maybe it's just if you have a good judge of character or not, mm-hmm. but you can tell when somebody, even if they're not being perfect and they have flaws, like everybody does, you can tell when someone has a good heart and when like they are willing to, yeah, how they apologize. Yep. You do get an argument, like how they argue, how they communicate, how they learn from it, if they change afterwards. Like you don't have to find the perfect person as, you know, on your right. first date. As they are. You can tell. And I don't know if you can like teach people to see that, but. Yeah, exactly. I think it's, it, it is in like the disagreements and like arguments. You start to realize, okay, this person doesn't really care how I feel. Yeah. Um, somebody just said it was, I think it was Jenna Palak. She was like, oh yeah, like don't, ar- when you're arguing, are you listening to defend yourself? Or are you listening to like actually hear what the person is saying? And I feel like that's like a telltale sign. Like if I have a problem with Isaac, I'm going to tell him. And if he's getting defensive and like stop getting defensive and (laughs) just listen to what I'm saying. And, um, yeah, you can tell if somebody's doing it on purpose or if they're not. Yeah. And you can tell, I feel like if someone really, yeah, just is invested in you and loves you and wants to make it work with you. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's also like key number one. Cause of course you're going to have, like you said, like ebbs and flows or like disagreements, but at the end of the day, if your partner wants to be with you and really right. wants to work it out, I don't know. 
Mm-hmm. It's funny, whenever I see a video of like a husband doing something nice for his wife, I always send it to Isaac. I'm like, oh, this is like, <laughs> this is so cute. Sweet. Yeah. Here's some new ideas. <laughs> yeah. Maybe send it to your boyfriend and see how he reacts. And if he's like, oh, that's cheesy, then leave mm-hmm. him. But also, yeah. I, I think you made a good point about like kicking them to the curb if they're like kind of just a lost cause. Like if you're constantly trying to make them right. someone they're not, especially if you're only dating, it's like, Girl, they might not because have mm-hmm. you have you guys seen the video on TikTok that's like the empty stocking or whatever? Empty stocking. Mm-mm, you didn't no. see that during Christmas time? Mm-mm. It was like this husband, um, it went pretty viral, but it was basically he didn't fill up his wife's stocking for oh, Christmas. That's, oh, maybe yes, I heard of something. I did like see that. that. And like the, he was kind of, he was the one videoing. He's like, oh, like, why is your stocking empty? And she's like, yeah. I don't know. Like, huh? and all the kids were like laughing with him and stuff. And I'm telling on himself. <laughs> but it was weird because he was recording it. Yeah. yeah. But basically it was like, he was making her the butt of the joke for like him not, you know, yeah. pulling through and whatever. And I was going to say, I feel like, excuse me also in a relationship, like you have to make your, your standards and your expectations very clear. Like, I feel like if that happened to me, which I it wouldn't, but I feel like if I <laughs> had like a few kids and Leif just dropped right. the ball on like all these different occasions, I would be like, no, this is not okay. Yeah. Like this makes me feel so, you know what I mean? Just being very forthright about like, right. this does not make me feel loved or seen. Like I always go above and beyond for whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And like, this really hurts me. Yes. I feel like being very open about that is, you know, not how to train them or, but sometimes like maybe they're not as emotional or they're not as clued right. into certain things. And it's like, it's not an excuse, but I feel like they got to learn at some point. And, oh yeah. And it goes back to the open hearted thing. Like if you can tell if they're open and they're willing to learn how they react to you bringing up like something, a want or a need that you have that maybe they weren't aware of before, if they're acting like you said, like that's dumb. I don't know that husbands yeah. don't do that. Blah blah blah. <gasps> then yeah, I'm that's so not terrified. something you want to deal with. That's when you're like, okay, you're a lost cause. But if right. they're like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know. It's okay. If, I've dropped the ball on so many things. It's like if we held ourselves to that standard, of like we have to be perfect all the time. But you have to be willing to change. Yeah. So it's almost like finding a guy that's open to change, but you're not like begging him mm-hmm. to change yes. because I feel like there's some just like instinctual things in a girl's mind that you might see the way he treats his mom and mm-hmm. like, that's a red flag. Like, no, like you're, he's never going to treat you any differently than like, if he's calling his mom a bitch, he's probably going to call you a bitch. Like yeah. it, it's True. kind of like that. But in terms of like change, Hey, like this kind of bothered me. Is he apt to change the next time? Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like becoming a parent, me and Isaac have, it's a huge learning curve. Yeah. And so even just like breastfeeding, I've been like, okay, I'm waking up every night to breastfeed. Like you're waking up to also like change her diaper because I'm not going to be doing X, Y, and Z all alone. He's like, okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And if he was like, no, that doesn't make sense. And I have to kick him the curb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then he's gone. Sayonara. <laughs> yeah. No, is he, on, so is he on daddy duty right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is he babysitting? He's babysitting. He's babysitting yeah. his child right yeah, now. Yeah, he's babysitting right Slay now. Slay Isaac. It, um, it's like about being a team. It really is. I can't I imagine like. leaving her with him and having to give him instructions. No, that would I bother me that. so much. Like I have left on, when we went on tour, like I would leave case with Nick every time. And I'm like, the fact that if I don't talk to them for hours, I feel totally right. fine being like, Hey, how's it going? And I know that he's not like, how do I clean his bottle? Like, how do I do this? <laughs> how much does he eat? Yeah. Like how many diaper changed a day? Yeah. I just feel like those things would definitely bother me, which not everybody is going to be bothered by that. Yeah. But for me, I'm like, Half the weight. Like, yeah, I carried her yeah. for nine months. You can carry her for the yeah, next nine I'm months. Yeah, I'm carrying all the weight right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, my titties are keeping her <laughs> yeah. alive. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's so true. And I feel like it's not necessarily, yeah, none of it's necessarily teachable, but it's just about finding a good, right. a good person mm-hmm. to be with that loves you and wants the best for you truly mm-hmm. and doesn't invalidate your feelings if you say, right, whatever, A, B, and, and C. And I feel like almost changing is like, hey, this is a better way to love me. And if they don't want to like love you in that way, then that's when you realize it. Then yeah, It's not even about change. It's like, hey, this bothers me or like I can be better loved in this way. And hopefully they would want to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think some, okay, we might be getting too deep into like <laughs> attachment styles here, but I feel like you have to also be aware of your own um, tendencies with dating or relationships where it's like some girls genuinely, they're like, why do I always go after the bad guy? Because- 
even when me and Nick started dating and we were getting more serious, like when we would get into arguments, I would be like, I am, a f- you know, fiery fighter. I like to argue sometimes just <laughs> for the Aries. sake of arguing. Exactly. <laughs> and so we would be like in an argument, I'd be kind of getting heated and he would kind of just accept and be like, okay, I'm really sorry that you felt that. like, what can I do to change? And I'd be like taking it back. I'm like, whoa. I thought we were just going to go back and forth here. Right. Like he, and then we leave, like I mean, stay mad. I was like, so shocked by him being, you know, <laughs> like, like a nice guy yeah. like, who was open to understanding like my feelings. And I was like, Oh, I have just gotten used to and liked, you know, this like back and forth. Right. You know what I mean? Like my tendencies of like, you know, whatever attachment styles or whatever you want to call Even it. Even just but what you're comfortable with, like what exactly, you start to become comfortable what with. What you start mm-hmm. accepting. And so if you are someone who's like, why do I always go for the bad guys? Like, why can't I find a nice guy? They're there. You probably just stop being attracted to them once they're nice to you. You're like, oh. Oh, definitely. I feel like Isaac was overly nice and kind of gave me the ick for a minute. And I was like, why am I doing that? When you first (laughs) met him, were you like, you were icked? (laughs) (laughs) No. You were icked? No. No, I I mean, were you like, oh, I like really like him? Or were you like, okay, we could be friends? Or what was the vibe when you guys met? Oh, no, I like fell in love day one. Really? But then in a few weeks into our relationship, he was always just so like nice. And he was raised in Georgia. So like he had like the Southern hospitality. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, wow, I I deserve this. Yeah. And then I got to a point where I was like, okay, I can never not be with Isaac because I don't think I could ever go back to what I had dated before him. Exactly. That's how I felt as well. I was like, That's well, at first I'm like, oh my gosh, good. like, this is what I deserve. Then after a while, I'm like, do I deserve this? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I, I don't right now, I don't think I deserve like, this. this postpartum rage I'm like, poor run. Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just silent (laughs) (laughs) therapy session over (laughs) well and that's also going into like transitioning into being pregnant and then you know having a baby and Mm -hmm. postpartum especially when it's such like a tender time and then you also have this baby to take care of having a good partner is literally life changing yeah it's make or break like having that person there to support you and who wants to support you because you're going to go through it no matter what, whatever you're going through. But if you have the right person with you, it makes it so much less heavy. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I can, I say this all the time. Like if I was ever grateful for my husband to lose his job, like it it was this time Yeah. because had he had not lost his job, one, I wouldn't have been able to be in California. I would have been in Vegas where I just, I had like one or two like girlfriends and they're very new girlfriends. So I feel like I wouldn't have felt comfortable like pulling out my tit in front of them. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. like I probably would have locked myself in my house. Um, but also he would have been at practice every day. So all the stuff that I went through with like not only a C-section recovering from that, but like then I had an infection in my colon and I like could not move. I had like a 102 fever. I could not imagine doing all that alone. And like he's just at practice like, oh yeah, like, I'm so sore from practice. <laughs> I would have like, dream. yeah. It would have been very difficult. With NFL life, like not to go backwards, we'll go back into the motherhood thing in a second, but is that, I don't even know like the right question to ask, but I feel like that could be potentially hard on just, it, it's a it's a hectic lifestyle. Like it you're consuming. constantly moving. Like yeah. it, has that been hard on your relationship at times or been like, okay, like I'm, or do you, are you, do you guys feel like you just kind of move as this unit where it's like, we signed up for this together. Like we're just, we're I feel like it. for the most part, it's like, we're definitely a unit. Like we're doing this together. We've never thought about doing long distance, like while married, some yeah. couples do and it works for them, but I just have never wanted to do that. So it's always like we're a unit, but that's not to say like, there haven't been times where I say like, Oh my God, I like, I think this year I said it because I was pregnant and emotional. I was like, I'm, I, I moved to this place for you. And he was like, dang, like that kind of like hurt me because yeah, yeah. like, I guess I, I, you are here because of me. So you don't want to feel like they have resentment towards you for it. Yeah. Right. And so I think that's when he realizes like, okay, emotionally, I have to like make sure my wife is okay at home because we are in this new city and like, I'm just kind of forcing her to be not really forcing, but in a way, yeah. like mm-hmm. making her be in this place. So him being open to like how I'm feeling definitely makes all the difference. Yeah. Yeah. How many times have you guys moved since you've been married? Mm, um, I think it's like 11 or 12. Oh, that's <laughs> wild. And, and you're I about to like move again. You guys have yeah. a lot of stuff too. Maybe it's just accumulated over the years, but. Mm-hmm. 
we uh, had. It's not like you're in your dorms and you're trying to move like a bed or two. No, we. I wish I could live the minimal lifestyle. That's just yeah. not me. But we had like a pod sitting in Ohio for the past year, and it just got shipped to like our lake house in Texas. And Isaac took everything out. And he was like, "Oh wow, we have this, we have that." And we're like, "I don't even remember that." Yeah. So I'm looking forward to the day he does retire just to like set down roots because I feel like that's something that I've been struggling with now, like having a baby. I'm like, I want mom friends. Like I want to be able to like have play dates and like have her grow up in a very stable Mm. place like that, which she won't kind of understand that for like a few more years. So we have time. But I want to have like that stable life of, okay, these are my girlfriends. Like these are our couple friends. This is like my go to coffee shop. And we just haven't had that stability yet. But we cho- we choose to not have a stability. So that's where on social media, I have to like go backwards. I'm like, we have chose to do that. <laughs> yeah. So I can't complain too much. Yeah. But it but, is, it, grass is always greener. Right. Because some people, they're like, I need to mix this up. I've been doing the same thing for years, but it always looks better on the other side. I think I'm going to be really sad the day I don't like move because yeah. it's been so hectic and chaotic and I think I kind of thrive off of it mm-hmm. I'm gonna be bored yeah <laughs> literally you yeah. like finally don't have to move you're like where should we go next Isaac's like huh no literally on Monday we booked a trip to Cabo and I was like wait we shouldn't have done that so then we canceled it <laughs> you canceled it I saw you were gonna yeah, yeah that's I'm so dead fun. I'm like wait we are moving out of our house we're going to Vegas for the Super Bowl and like I just booked like our daughter's first international trip I was like maybe <laughs> just some I'm kind of stimulation cancel that yeah <laughs> that is so I, I loved the passport content of getting oh my god Scotty's wait passport. I'll show you her passport photo after stop oh. because you have to have like a baby like open their eyes and she's mm-hmm. only six or seven weeks old so we make this like very loud noise that she always goes like like shocked and so her passport <laughs> photo is like <laughs> They're like, is this baby okay? (laughs) Yeah. She's supposed to be coming with you? (laughs) She's going to look back on it and be like, mom, what the f***? (laughs) She loves traveling the world with us. She's like, (laughs) well, we were, when is this airing? Next week. Next week. Okay. So we were, we were invited on a brand trip with Tarte and we were going to go to Bora Bora and then, Ooh. and that was going to be her first, her first, her brand, first trip. brand trip. We love that. Um, Get that coin, Scotty. And we're going to bring my mom so that like we could, me and Isaac could go to all the events, but like the owner of Tarte, she was super sweet. And she was like, Hey, like, I know like postpartum's are off, but like, I still want to invite you guys. So we were thinking about doing it. And then we ended up like accepting working with the NFL this year. So yeah, we're not going to Bora. Well, we were going to go to Bora Bora. We we're going to go to Cabo. Like, yeah. So now we're working with the Super Bowl. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh, I'm so jealous. I've been in my NFL era this year. Like, I, you grew up watching football? Yeah, my dad like liked football. He went to Michigan State. I went to Michigan State, which is a big football, like yeah. big one school. I did not watch football growing up at all. Like, mm-hmm. we like, would watch baseball here and there. Like, we played sports, but um, last year I just saw a TikTok pop up, like my memories or whatever. And it was me complaining about my husband watching football. I was like, this is so boring. I'm like, me this year, like, can you watch Case so I can watch the game? <laughs> like, like, I need to this watch is the really game. Important. <laughs> Jalen Hurts is playing right now, okay? Um, so I'm so jealous you're going to the Super Bowl. It's an atmosphere unlike any other. It is absolutely insane. I don't even care what teams are playing. I mean, obviously, it'd be cool yeah. if my husband was playing. But aside from that, like, all the events leading up to it are super cool. And, like, just all these – these companies pour so much money into it. It's absolutely insane. I mean, imagine. not just commercials, but the events, the parties, it's wild. I'm sure. Oh my gosh. Am I stupid? Is it always, is it in a different place? Mm-hmm. All the it's time? in a different place every year, but they do, only do closed stadiums. I okay. assume just to like prevent weather changes. So this year it's in Vegas. Last year it was in Scottsdale. The year before that it was at SoFi. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask you because you have the inside scoop, mm-hmm. obviously you and Isaac, if the NFL is scripted or not. <laughs> no. Do you think that they had it? <laughs> like, if it is, Isaac doesn't have the script. <laughs> <laughs> He's not in on the conspiracy no. because, um, you know how they had the colors thing of oh, the yeah. logo and this year is purple and red, but they're like, oh, so it's going to be the Ravens and the mm-hmm. 49ers, but now it's the chiefs. I'm like, did they just have to change the script when know, Travis right? started dating Taylor? Did they real yeah, exactly right? They're like, well, now we have to get the Chiefs to the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's and like the did you see on TikTok like the cake was already made, like 49ers versus the Chiefs? Yeah. No. No. It was like the day before the game. Whose cake what cake? It was at like Kroger. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty sure the people at Kroger don't have the script mm. either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All these people. They are the ones people. who know everything. Yeah, right. At yeah. Kroger. Like send it to the grocery store, like cake maker. Yeah. That what is your take on 
just the Taylor Swift of it all and like how it's affected the NFL. Like I know there's a lot of discourse around mm-hmm. people being like, this has ruined the NFL. And then obviously a lot of mm-hmm. people and Swifties are like, this is the coolest, best thing ever. I think there's two things about it. One, I think that some social media platforms have just taken it too far. Like making it all about, oh my God, this girl's like at the football game. Like, yeah, she's supporting her boyfriend. Like it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. And then secondly, I think it's great that like young girls are interested in football and like get to watch it with their dads. Like I would have loved seeing like somebody I looked up to like Taylor Swift. So I think that everybody that has a problem with it is, I don't know. I think they're just like, like is, I feel like it's more so like the guys. Yeah. I'm like you're complaining a lot. Like, <laughs> are you like, <laughs> yeah, you need to focus on your team winning. Okay. Yeah. Not and I, I'm sh- it can definitely be a lot because that's all the NFL is kind of talking about right now, mm-hmm. but it is a really cool thing. Like Taylor Swift is dating I Travis know. Kelsey, but it is I think weird. I, hopefully during the Super Bowl they won't keep panning to her, but you know. I feel like yeah, I'm like yeah. I hope not. <laughs> Me eats it up every time. I'm like yeah. running in to see. Did they show her yet? <laughs> like what is she wearing? Yeah, it really is such a cool moment in like just pop culture, sports history. Right. I feel mm-hmm. like so they're just they're eating it up and we're eating it up and I'm yeah. hoping that her dating ta- uh, Travis, <laughs> her dating Taylor. <laughs> I hope that her dating him like actually keeps the interest going though, like. Hopefully women will feel like they have a place in sports because for so many years people are like, oh, you like sports? You're a pick me girl. Mm-hmm. I fucking hate that shit. I'm like, yeah. or I just like sports. I don't have to have like this quirk about me. Like, oh, I'm quirky. I like sports. No, it's so just a true. very interesting. If you understand the game, it can be very interesting. And I also feel like sometimes it takes, speaking from personal experience, sometimes it takes a celebrity dating someone Mm -hmm. on a team you like or something to get you invested. Like when Kendall Jenner was dating Devin Booker, that's originally why we started getting more invested in the Suns. And now Mm -hmm. like, I don't miss a game. Like I'm obsessed. Yeah. And And it's like, that's what piques my interest. Mm -hmm. But now I just actually genuinely really love basketball. And like, I I actually really enjoy watching. So like whatever the hook is. Well, and me being in it, I love watching football because I'm like, oh, my husband's down there. Like that's cool. Great tackle. But even more so, now I know more about the wives. I'm like, oh, from an outside perspective, if you see the like behind the scenes of a player's day to day, you might be like, oh, wow, I'm cheering for his team because like, oh, wow, he just had a daughter, blah, blah, blah. You become more invested. Oh, that's me. I think it makes the game fun. Me with Kirk Cousins. I'm like, don't (laughs) hurt him. He's too nice. He's so adorable. He went to Michigan State. I saw a TikTok of this. Did you guys see this? So the girls, they're like, ran into Kirk Cousins at the gym and they're sitting in a car with him. He's the driver. They're in the passenger seat. They're like, help, why are you in his car? Wait, what do you mean you ran into him at the gym? I'm You're sorry? carpooling with him. And they told the story about how they brought him back to their their college class. And he was like, oh yeah, hop in, it's raining. Like I'll drive you there because their professor was gonna give them extra credit. I'm like, he is the sweetest, kindest, most <laughs> gem of a man. Adorable. Like, what? I don't know anything yeah. about this. Wait, He's, that's a- I so love when Kirk people like, yeah. So when you see and I feel like football, it's hard because everybody's wearing a helmet. So it's not like you're seeing their face. Whereas in basketball or baseball, you might see them like more clearly. You're like, oh, that guy's really hot. Like I want to watch yeah. him. But for football, I feel like these guys are on social media or you see their wife or like, I don't know, some Netflix show and it can make it more interesting. Definitely. For sure. We get so, when we find a new player to fix it on, we look at their Zodiac sign, their yeah. children. Are we compatible? I'm wife. married, but like, are we compatible? <laughs> yeah. like, would this work hypothetically? Right. I've had two dreams lately that I've been dating Devin Booker. I'm actually terrified. I had a dream I was late to this podcast. <laughs> really? I'm like, my, man, I'm anxious. <laughs> my, my pregnancy dreams are so vivid. I have like five a night. Oh, no, wait. Have you had one where you wake up and, and like screaming? Oh, no, not one of those a yet. Terror. They're always that I. Oh, yeah. I've, I've woken up and in my dream, I'm like, Help, help. And I have to go wake up and turn on the lights. Like, you can't do that. Oh, oh that's terrifying. Well, at least yeah. you can yell in your dreams. I'm like trying to. <laughs> just silent. No, but the time you do get a scream out, it's going to come out like audibly. Real. Oh my God. Late the other night, we're just, we're in bed. It's like probably 3 a.m. And he just goes. <sighs> oh, no. <laughs> and I literally grabbed him. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? Is-? He's like, oh, I was having a nightmare. And then the next that's day he so was scary. like detailing it for me. Literally telling me for 10 minutes about this dream. But he was like, the part where I was breathing was like, I knew I had to like, like there was like an intruder basically. And he was uh-huh. like, I knew I had to like go and what fight him, oh, get him or whatever. No. And he so was, was just like, him preparing. <laughs> like he's behind the wall with a gun. <laughs> I'm like, 
jeez. It was a jump scare though. <laughs> oh the deepest gosh. breaths. I'm like, I'm terrified. But yeah, I, I swear I have like, I, I usually don't remember my dreams that well, but mm-hmm. I swear I have like five a night. Like I wake up to mm-hmm. a dream. I and they're not always scary or bad. Like sometimes they're just whatever. But it's I was like at the grocery store. Like yeah. But yeah. it's like annoying. I'm like, can I sleep? Like, like can I get some REM? Is I've that had, what you dream in REM? I don't know. I don't know. I think so. I've had pregnancy dreams of giving birth to a <laughs> adult human being. No, because I had <laughs> I've had those dreams, but it's always me in the hospital on the staircase in the hospital. Oh. Just like and I see the baby coming out, which is weird because I never had a vaginal delivery. So that is wild. Before you gave birth or no, after? I've had that dream after. After, okay. Well, for your <laughs> next birth, like, I guess you, you got a premonition. <laughs> Watch out for go the, the stairs. Stairwell. I'm like getting those contractions maybe yeah. just in the stairwell. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, I had a dream where I literally gave birth and it was like a live adult human being, but I couldn't remember the birth. But everyone was like, yeah, you gave birth to that. I'm like, I don't remember. I was so sad. But I was like, <laughs> Wait, how are they literally 20 years old? <laughs> I was so confused. But it's so real in your dream. It's like, oh, I missed my birth. No, and it just makes sense. You're like, well, I guess it is. Yeah, I guess. Why are dreams so realistic? And like telling, I mean, as we're telling them for 10 minutes, but also like talking (laughs) about them. I don't care. Talking about them after, it's like, no one cares. Like when I'm, you know, I'll be like, (laughs) and then you were on, and Lisa's like, cool. And I'm like, like, I remember I told a dream on the podcast like a few weeks ago. And as I was like telling it, I'm like, like, I should be quiet now. Like, like no nobody one cares. cares about that. Yeah. Like it's just simply because you're acting like it's up. a memory that actually happened yeah. to you, and then you're like, wait, this didn't happen, so they don't care. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, this isn't going to it's, affect their life. Like the grown baby is no longer here. Yeah, so. it doesn't exist. Um, you said your C-section was like a good. I love my C-section. Overall. Mm-hmm. Um, when was, you were telling us about it, I was learning so much. I did not know how fast it was that you were saying like oh, it's, minutes. I want it was like fifteen to twenty minutes. It's but she was out in the first like 60 seconds. Like from start to finish. Yes. That is crazy to me. Why but, did I think it was mm-hmm. like a three-hour operation? Oh, my God. I could not lay away for three hours. No. When you you said something that actually shook me, <laughs> Chelsea and I were talking about it, like, <laughs> or I think you were the one who said it, how like when you look down, like your stomach's not that far away. Right. But in, if you see so like a, in movies or like if you see somebody like a picture of them on the operating table, you're like, oh, like that's down by their stomach. Like they're down there. But then you look at your stomach like, Wait. Oh, it's so close. Like, <laughs> yeah, I just kept thinking like about right that. Here. Yeah, the curtains. After like, you said that, because I'm like, you, I would, I picture it as like happening like way over here. But right. It's like, no, I mean, that's it's really right there. Like, really you can re- like with your hands, you can reach down. There. Like, you could stop the operation if you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> probably, <laughs> yeah. But it is <laughs> a little like, bit stop. further than you're like, <laughs> it's a little bit further than you realize, though, because it's like right. Like I wouldn't yeah. feel comfortable showing anybody unless Your I star. had a really good bikini wax. <laughs> but like, it's like really down there. Yeah, they that's actually. Low. I feel like lately, any of my friends have had a C-section. The scar is so low and like very non-detectable. I'm like, wow, I didn't yeah. realize. Mm-hmm. I think because it is so low, it just like wouldn't show really unless really ever unless you're naked right and yeah, maybe like, wearing a certain swimsuit yeah no. not even that's a risky swimsuit <laughs> that's a risky one yeah <laughs> like we're a little too much then yeah. yeah it's super low which is great though because I feel like that was the one thing I was like oh I don't well I wanted the experience of a vaginal delivery but if I couldn't have that I was like well the scar like that sucks but you can't really see the scar yeah yeah how do you feel now wait how many months are you one and a half month postpartum yeah Sorry, Seven I'm weeks. like, how old are you? You're like, how many months do you? I was like, well, I'm pretty sure I already gave birth. <laughs> how many birth. months are you? You're like 2,700. Um, so are you feeling like on a scale of one to 10? I don't, that's hard to do. But how much are you feeling like back to kind of like, yourself? Are you feeling like shit or no? <laughs> like, are you talking about like mental or physical? Maybe Either both. Or both. Because physical, I started working out, which the first workout was rough. I was on it walking in incline, like, <sighs> like it was rough, but- Like you just went to the gym and mm-hmm. did something? Okay. Yeah, but now I feel way back to normal in terms of physical. So I'm super grateful for that because my incision doesn't hurt. It's like kind of numb. It's a weird sensation when I touch it, but I mean, I don't really touch, don't touch <laughs> yeah. my body that much. <laughs> yeah. you know? You really rub down there that much. <laughs> no, but um, in terms of mental, mental, I feel like I was great, great, great. And then there was a random day where I was like, oh, wow, I feel like nothing. I feel emotionless. And Isaac was like, oh, like you must be having a hard day. Like I'll take the baby. And I was like, no, no, no. I like, she's the only thing that's making me like feel anything right now. 
So I kind of dealt with a little bit of like postpartum anxiety. I'm like a little bit of postpartum. I'm like, there was definitely a week where I was crying every day and it was more so like, I don't feel anything. It's not anything to do with my daughter, which I'm grateful for because I look at her and I'm like, I love her. I want to take care of her. She was the only thing that actually brought me any emotion. But in terms of like looking forward to stuff, I stopped looking forward to things and then Isaac would say, oh, like, let's get out of the house and, like, go for a walk. And I'm like, uh, no, I just want to, like, lay in bed. And that's when I knew it was starting to get bad. And then I talked to my hairdresser. I was like, I'm depressed. She was like, oh, you should get medicated. And I was like, is that something to look down on? Like, I don't know. I never look down on people that are medicated, but I never thought I was going to get to that point. It's just an unknown. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think a fear of mine was like, oh, if I get on these, I'll never get off of them. But I guess if they're helping, like, why would I want to get off of them? So... Definitely. So you're on some medication now. Yeah. And it's, so. is it helping or is it does it take a second to like kick in? So I'm, I'm on day five and they say it takes like two weeks. Okay. So I'm like, you like take a half a pill for a few days and then you start to take the whole pill. So mm-hmm. we'll see. But I feel like already a little bit better. That's good. But Did I've you- always dealt with anxiety. So I don't know how like these change. Like, are they just going to make me stop worrying about things? Yeah. If they do, that's great. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. You, Did you feel anxious in your pregnancy? Or not no, as much? No, no. Mm. And I was super lovey-dovey, emotional. I was, like, I was like, wow, I never thought, like, you loved me until you got pregnant. And, like, <laughs> wow, like, you really loved me. Um, and now he's like, you are just, like, the opposite of mm. emotional. It's funny because he'll be like, oh, like, can I have a hug? And I'm like, I honestly don't want to. <laughs> and he's like, God bless you. Like, God bless him because he is very receptive. And he's so supportive in the aspect, like, He's like, okay, did you take your medication? Like, do you need water? Like, I'll fill up your water. Like, go take your meds. Um, And I can't imagine if he was the type of guy that didn't believe in anxiety. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh, yikes. That would be hard. We listened to something. or we I think we talked to friends. And the husband – oh, it was another podcast. um, And on that podcast, a girl was talking about taking anxiety meds. And the husband was like, I'm so grateful for them because it, like, brought my wife back. Yeah. And especially postpartum. And Isaac was like, that's when it really switched. Like, oh, wow, these could definitely help. So then he was like, okay, go, go, yeah. go talk Did to you this take those today? Yeah. 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 I know. I just was kind of back to the good partner thing. I feel like, mm-hmm. gosh, there's so much. To, and I haven't gone through birth or postpartum or any of that. But even just IVF and pregnancy, it's like right. same type of like hormones and like shifts. And I'm just like, oh, it's it's really imperative that you have someone that's just even if they can't understand, they mm-hmm. at least they understand that you are going through something. They understand mm-hmm. that like they don't cushion. understand. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. I can only imagine during IVF because I don't know why, but I feel like the outward perspective of men is that they like, oh yeah, like I'll have a baby, but they're not like excited to have a baby. So like seeing your IVF journey, I'm like, oh, it's so cute them like doing shots together. But obviously like you guys are married, like he wants a baby, you yeah. want a baby. Um, but I'm sure there are women out there that don't have that supportive partner. So they're like kind of doing it alone. I can't imagine that. I can't no. either. You I, have to have like some kind of support or like the village of it mm-hmm. all. Like you need to have that with whatever you're going through, especially because sometimes you don't know when it's going to happen. Like right. when the ball's going to drop, when you're going to start feeling like emotionally unstable, right. especially after you have the kid, it's like, okay, it's no longer just like, I can just disappear for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now I have to take care of this person. Like I need someone to take care of me. Right. Yeah. It's almost like, especially breastfeeding. I tell this to Isaac all the time. I'm like, I'm taking, I, I'm feeding her. I'm taking care of her. So I need you to like, you're always doing the diapers. You're always feeding me. You're mm-hmm. always giving me water. Cause like essentially you taking care of me is taking care of her. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the best way to describe it. And doing what you can do. Mm -hmm. I think especially postpartum, it's so, there's so many emotions and it's, it is so connected to your physicality as well because your body just went through so much. And I don't, I mean, obviously I'm not a doctor, so I don't (laughs) know what hormones, but I've seen so many things about how many hormones are just like stripped from you all at the same time. It's like the biggest hormonal drop. Yeah. So you're just like, oh my gosh, like I used to have this baby inside of me. Now this baby is outside of me. Mm -hmm. So I want it to be as close to me as possible, but also sometimes I get overwhelmed and I want to get, I have, I feel like real life is coming back in. So I feel like I have to go do stuff, but in order to do that stuff, (laughs) it's like this whole list. I remember one day, like probably like two months postpartum, I was just like, okay, the newborn bliss bubble is like, kind of over. I have to get back into real life. That was the tough part. Yeah. And you're like the list now that I have to get one thing that used to be so simple done is so complex. Like I was explaining it to Nick and he was like literally like tearing up. I'm like, I feel 
so overwhelmed. I'm like, I, in order to go to the gym to take care of myself, I have to make sure I pump so that Mm -hmm. you can give him a bottle while I'm gone. And then in order to have like an hour and a half to be gone, I have to do this, this, this. It's like in my head and it's nothing anyone can help me with. I just have to do it because that's the the overwhelming part is that he, like Isaac can't like pump his breath. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Wouldn't that be nice? (laughs) Yeah. Right. Um, so I think that's the difficult part that there is so much mental load on a woman that I'm, I'm grateful that Isaac is like, okay, the mental load of like our house being clean or Mm -hmm. like your water bottle being full or like going in grocery shopping, like take that off my mental load so I can worry about this new mental load that I have no idea like what I'm doing. But I gave birth during like Christmas time. I gave birth on the 9th of December and I didn't talk on social media about giving birth. And I'm so grateful I didn't because it really allowed me to be in that bubble. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like it wasn't even real life. Like we were waking up, just laying in bed, like going back to sleep. It was great. And then when I announced, I was like, okay, now it's Christmas time. Mm-hmm. But then after, you know, like the like de- like depressive time where everybody goes back to work and back to school, yeah. like in yeah. January, that hit hard, hard mm-hmm. because I was like, okay, everyone's returning to their normal life. I don't even know what my new normal is. So that was really hard too. Yeah. The expectations start coming in mm-hmm. of like what you should be doing. And yeah. And then I, you see everybody on social media, like uh ballerina farms is like at Miss America. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm crying on the toilet right now. So we are in very different places. Mm-hmm. So many people like hated on her for that. I'm like, if she can do it, like go after go it. Off. But yeah. that is not me. Also, that's her eighth child. Like, she's had plenty of practice. She like, knows, yeah. Especially with your first, well, at least, I mean, I've only had one so far, so that's <laughs> all like, I know. With your fourth, yeah. it'll be great. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> just wait. Oh, right. I've also only done one. But you are it's so new. Like, it's just so new, and your life is so different that you're just adjusting in so many different ways. Mm-hmm. And you love this thing, and it's, like, terrifying. Like, time becomes so apparent to you. Like, that was, like so trippy to me like three weeks afterwards I was like oh my gosh he is literally going to go he's gonna move out one day I am sobbing (laughs) like that is so and that's not that far like I know 18 years is like kind of long but I'm like think about (laughs) we got married eight years ago I'm like how old are you (laughs) (laughs) I mean like we got married eight years ago like it'll just start flying by right we'll just start flying by Everyone I love is going to die. Like the <laughs> world is going to end. Like I was just like, oh my gosh, time is so apparent. I'm not yeah. just like living this willy dilly or mm-hmm. whatever life anymore. It's well, and shocking. now I'm like, I look back and I feel like my postpartum was kind of traumatic because of like me being re-hospitalized that I feel yeah. like it took away from like her being in like the newborn scrunch and like the, her being super tiny. So the other day I was packing up her newborn clothes cause she's grown out of them and I was sobbing. That's I a was rough like, one. Oh my God, she's already on like size one diapers. Like this is a a horrible, oh my God. Um, And I think it's one difficult because you're like, oh shit, time is going by so quick. And then two, you're like, wait, I can't get that back. Yeah. So now I'm like, oh, I get pregnant again. No, it's so- (laughs) get on it. It's a back and forth of like highs and lows because you're just so excited to see them grow up because- Every time Case hits a new milestone, like he says something, I'm like, he's never done that where he's you know right. done this and this. Oh my gosh. But when he got his first tooth, I sobbed because I was like, I did not appreciate his gummy smile. Like, oh. and I will never have no teeth again. <laughs> it's I mean, like maybe you- he's old, but I won't be here. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I had this like, I was like, why am I getting emotional about this? This is so stupid. Like, I'm so excited. He's right. getting teeth. He's growing up. That's so fun. But then at the same time, you do have this like, oh my gosh, I'm heartbroken. It's like you love their new milestones, but at the same time, like you kind of like get sad because mm-hmm. of them. Yeah. Like Scotty smiling. I'm like, oh my God, I love that. But then I miss the days where like she really wouldn't open her eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what am I doing? <laughs> I know, it's wild. Yeah. I feel like it really is nice to hear all this stuff. We were doing kind of a longer pregnancy update the other, I think it was last week on the podcast. And I genuinely wanted to cut half of it out. Like I, we were talking, I'm like, should we just cut a lot of mm-hmm. it out? Because it was, I felt like we were just like droning on talking about right. like, oh, being sick and like being pregnancy fatigued, whatever. And then I was shocked because a lot of people are commenting. They're like, thank you so much for saying all this. Like it, I don't have many friends around me who are pregnant and you guys feel like my friends. Anyway, and I was just like, oh, that's really nice. I'm glad we didn't cut that section yeah, out just because right. I felt like I was like droning on or boring people. Right. I don't know. I think that obviously things are going to connect to people at different times in their life. Maybe if you're not going through, you know, any Mm -hmm. of this postpartum stuff, then it it wouldn't connect as deeply, but I feel like it's really good to share just. 
anything yeah. you're willing, anything you're willing to share, you know, about yeah. all of that. The other, the, the first day I took medication, I made a video of like talking about taking medication and I was crying and I'm like, uh, I've cried on the internet before. Like this isn't yeah. anything new. And I thought I would make it and people would be like, oh my God, like just like get back into it. Like all women do it. Like we're all here somehow. Like my mom is fine. So I was kind of worried about it reaching the wrong side of TikTok where I feel like so many videos do reach the wrong side. And then the comment section was like, oh my God, I dealt with this, like thousands and thousands of women. And it was like, why, why do we not talk about this more than? I know. And like so many people talking about being medicated during postpartum and they're like, oh my God, I finally weaned off like after a year, like I'm feeling so much better that I can actually get off my meds. I'm like, why? I thought that I was like a rare person for like getting on meds postpartum, but then like hearing the all these one. people, I'm like, I, I feel so much better about this. Yeah. I know. And I feel like some of it to blame is, um, your body's ability to wipe your memory of the right. things that, cause I, anytime I talk like, or I hear somebody's postpartum syndrome, I'm like, yeah, I can relate to that. I had like really bad intrusive thoughts. Like I was mm -hmm. so, I, my anxiety was at all time high, Right. but then in general people ask me, I'm like, I, never felt better and never was more beautiful. <laughs> like I had a blissful postpartum right. experience, but it's because you genuinely like forget all the bad stuff. And it which is kind of comforting because mm -hmm. even looking back on my first pregnancy when at the time I was like, I'm so sick. I'm like, I had no body image issues. I, I felt so womanly, so beautiful. Birth was amazing. Postpartum was amazing. Like I, I love being a mom, but then you like hear the details. You're like, yeah, I had that too. And they're like, that's horrific. <laughs> like, what do you mean? That's I'm like, yeah, I'm I had to get surgery on my vagina like two months after, get some tissue taken out. Like, they're like, wait, well, I thought you said you liked postpartum. I'm like, I did. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you're like, wait, can you make up your mind? Yeah. It's funny because I did love my C-section, but it was absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Like laying yeah. on the table, like they were pushing down on my stomach and like yanking me. My husband is like, that was traumatic. And he doesn't have like the hormonal change after birth. So maybe that's why he remembers it more vividly. Yeah. But I was like, I would do that like 20 times again. Like literally in the hospital, I was like, I, I literally want to be pregnant. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> okay. Like, <"Ooh." laughs> he's like, it somebody gets to go some meds because she's yeah. not thinking. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it really tricks you. Mm -hmm. I can't believe but that's, how much. That's, I think that's almost good that woman can hear like, oh yeah, like it, it was scary, but it was the best time ever. Yeah. Because during like the recovery and pregnancy, like it is terrifying being in it, but then looking back on it, you're like, that wasn't that bad. Like I survived. Yeah. Like I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Like that it was really, the best time of my life. Mm -hmm. It really is interesting how you just, once you move on from something, you, you don't forget, but it's, it is a distant you memory. It. Yeah. And I even feel that way about IVF. It's like when I was going through, it, I was like, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Oh, but yeah. again, of course I'm like, I would do it again. Like oh, I'm yeah. going to yeah. probably do it again. Like if I yeah, want to have another special kid. moments. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's rough too. Like the, the first time like didn't stick mm -hmm. because you're like, Oh, I have to do this next month. Yeah. Like that would be a, like a hard turnaround to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So quick. But I've been thinking about, because I, I kept feeling like, oh, the, one of the hardest parts of IVF was that it was not guaranteed. Like it was just like tons of sacrifice, right. tons of money, tons of energy, tons of emotion. And like, you just don't know if it'll like ever hoping, work. Yeah. yeah. And then like after the first one didn't work, it was even more like, oh, wow, I don't know if it'll ever. But as I've been thinking more, I'm like, that's just kind of life. Like nothing is guaranteed right. at mm -hmm. all. So it's like, not to invalidate my own feelings, but I'm, I've just been thinking about that. Like, even as I'm pregnant, I, I have had actually like quite a bit of anxiety during pregnancy, just being like, given my journey and how much I have, you know, had to do to get here. I'm like now terrified of something else going wrong. So right. I'm always very like, okay, I hope everything's okay or whatever. And I don't know. It just like hit me. I'm like, is this what being a freaking mom is like? Like you're just constantly going to be <laughs> yeah, worried from yeah. the like, second like it absolutely. implants in your stomach. Oh no, absolutely. Yes. Like I think like <laughs> Amazing. I sleep, I sleep, <laughs> sorry. I sleep with my hand like on her stomach yeah. sometimes just to like make sure she's breathing. Oh yeah. I've never been more aware of like semi trucks. Like when I'm walking down the road, I'm like, what if the semi truck way over there comes oh, over yeah. here? Like how would I get my baby out of this, unbuckle him in, in time to get him like, I'm like, why? Why I'm did I just run I'm literally that? already having those thoughts, which is uh, genuinely terrifying That's me. So we were scary. on a walk the other day and I, like we were kind of on a main road and like the car, I was just like mm -hmm. very aware of how fast the cars were going. And I was like, like I don't oh. feel good. I'm like, this is like <laughs> no. freaking me out. And I'm like, oh, is this called anxiety? And you just kind of like, I have like visions that like random things will happen where like she'll be in the bath and I'm like, what if her foot fell into yes. the garbage disposal and I turned it on? Yeah, the garbage <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I meant to say, like, <laughs> like, what if he reaches his hand was... in the sink? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you're like, what if he, like, reaches for a knife and stabs himself? You're like, uh, okay. <laughs> what if he grabs his toy box, brings it to the kitchen, stands <laughs> on the counter, finds a knife, and then jumps and off with himself. the knife in his hand? Yes. Like, <laughs> it's like the wildest shit where you're just like, okay. Like, a plane could hit my house. Like, yeah. I live, like, near the airport. <laughs> like, you never no. know. Oh, 100%. Know. Don't even get me started on the Titanic. <laughs> what? Is that, is that <laughs> yeah, a plane? Like, going to boat? It's like, moms, when they, like, hear about the Titanic, she's like, oh, my gosh, how would I save my child, like, if we were on the Titanic? Like, Oh, I would tread water and just hold. Yeah, <laughs> just hold it. She's until like, duh. One it's arm. not that hard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think you're a thought. D1 athlete, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the same luxury. Oh, yeah. Swimmer. He's literally half my size. I'd be like, oh, my gosh. No, but. Isaac can't swim if you're talking about it. Like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. We're like, okay, and that's another fear in life. Fear no, I'm boat. saving the baby. He's, he's on his own. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Oh, I my know. gosh. Well, good to know that it's normal, I guess, because I, yeah, I've already been feeling like that where I'm just like, I literally Googled. I was like, is it normal to, like, I don't even remember what I was Googling, but my Google searches for the past six months have been, if people had oh, access yeah. to them, they'd be like, yeah. are you well, Google was my Are best friend the first okay? few weeks of postpartum. I was like, okay, how hot is bath water? Mm-hmm. Like how That's hot nice. should a bottle be? Like, okay, how, like, how do I do this? How do I do that? Like literally like on Wikipedia, like, yeah. this, like the graphics. Can I see colors of poop and what's normal? <laughs> what texture? Like I need oh, to and, see real videos. No. And like Pinterest makes it so like cute. They're like poop colors and it's like a little <laughs> <Yeah>. wheel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, okay. Vomit Thanks. colors. Is it green, yellow or white? Right. Like, like, How much spit up is too much spit up? <laughs> like uh, taking pictures of her poop to like show her pediatrician, like this is normal. Yeah. And she's like yeah. me. She's like yeah. <laughs> I think oh, we've all done gosh. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, it's good to know that I'm in for even more than that because yeah, I was just <laughs> like, like the anxiety like, never stops. No, literally, I <laughs> no, it was like, gets better. Well, it gets worse. <laughs> like the anxiety gets better in, in that it becomes more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like I'm also lucky to have a lot of friends who are moms, so I can be like, like, is this normal? And they're like, yes. Right. So I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. You're like, okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of my friends don't have kids and a lot of my friends are not even in the state of California. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just f- around and figure it out. Mm-hmm. Like Google. I have bought so many of those like online courses where like they teach you about like newborn stuff. Yeah. Like the newborn startle. I was like, what? Why does she look scared? Like every five their seconds. Eyes, she's like, no one tells oh, you their eyes go crazy. Like the first couple weeks, you're like, she's oh, a cross eyed. I'm like, oh, yeah. do we have to have surgery? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna need some courses. I was late the other day, we were laying in bed. He's like, So once we bring the baby home, um, it's the most terrifying feeling. Like, what like, do we do? I'm like, like, You I walk don't know. in the front door and you're like, <laughs> So, so you live here now. We're just all looking at each other, like, <laughs> Okay. My dog's like, Who the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, how did your dogs react to Scotty? Were they sweet? Oh, yeah, super sweet. In the first few weeks, um, our male dog was very attached to me when I was pregnant. He was like, okay, baby. All right. Any, anything else? Like, nope. Okay, cool. Our female dog who didn't like me during pregnancy, she is like attached to our daughter. Really? Wherever she cries, she will like jump up on the bed, like put her head like down on like her chest. Aww. And I'm like, okay, I'm getting it. Like I'm getting to it. Give me some patience. Aww. Yeah. I feel like golden retrievers it. are like mm-hmm. just literally the best dogs. I can't wait for her to be like running. I picture like, her in little rain boots, just like running around in the mud with the dogs. And I'm just like, that would be wait. so fun. Yeah. Do you, do you hate your dogs now that you've given birth? Oh my <laughs> God. I hate that. Like they're definitely don't come, but no. Um, yeah. People who say that, I'm like, do you not like your dog? <laughs> because I'm like, Why did you say that? Chelsea? No, oh, I mean, it definitely changed. I, I yeah. felt different about her, but I wasn't, I don't hate her. <laughs> I don't hate her. Um, I think I don't post her as much on Instagram and people right. get very concerned. They're like, where's Sophie? I'm like, she's laying in bed. She's seven years old. and I don't post my cat at all. And people are like, she died. Did you kill her? Like, yeah. did you get rid of her? I'm did like, you kill her. No, please. she doesn't come around. Like, she I hates forgot me. you have a cat. Yeah. <laughs> so people like, do yeah, that. Yeah, you do neglect her. You're, <laughs> you're gasket the Suspicious. haters, Casey. But um, yeah, I feel like the dogs, the only time I'll like get annoyed where I didn't used to is that like Gus will like whine for attention. I'm like, shh. Yeah. Sh- like, please don't. That's what I was going to say. Versus before I'd be like, any want or need right. she had I'd be like oh my gosh I'm ta- like I will take you wherever you want to go I'll mm-hmm. do whatever you want to do you want to sleep under the covers I'll get up 10 <laughs> times a night to yep. put you under and now I'm like I cannot do this honey like you're gonna need to fend for yourself a little bit more see but I have anxiety about that because I don't know 
I deal with like empathy issues where I'm like, oh my God, they only had one walk today. Like I used to walk them twice. Yeah, so like now like, I said, go for a walk with them. Like they clearly need it. So it's just been a lot of Isaac taking care of the dogs. Oh, you know, know what? I listened to the song. Um, it's from Toy Story 2. <laughs> it's like, it's not She Used to Be Mine. It's called like, oh, um, no. when she, when somebody oh, loved me. Uh-huh. Oh, I listened no. to that. I listened to that. I'm thinking about Sophie and how now I have another baby. And I Oh my was, God. I can get emotional right now. No, <laughs> I was not okay. I was like, oh my gosh. I used to take her everywhere with me. Now she just like sees me with this baby. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I had to like have a sit down. I was like crying. She doesn't hear. She honestly doesn't hear. She doesn't care. hear. She's, <laughs> probably, <laughs> she's not deaf. Well, I mean, she can't understand me. She can't understand English. I literally was sitting down. I'm like, I know our relationship is different now. <laughs> this is just our roles now. I'm going to be oh. with the babies a little more. You have to take on more of a motherly role as well with him. <laughs> you know, she understood. Now she's the guard dog. Now she she's good. She's now not my baby anymore as much as she is like part of the family doing her role. I think an unpopular opinion or like this is like a different viewpoint is that I like when we lived in Vegas, the only reason I would leave my house was to walk them because they needed exercise or golden retrievers. So every morning I would go for like a two mile walk and like that became like my exercise while I was pregnant. And now I'm like, oh, they have to leave the house again. So it's gotten us out of the house multiple times where I feel like if we didn't have dogs, mm -hmm. I would have been cooped up and like been okay with that. Like Scotty went to the beach at like eight days old. Which people would be like, oh my God, disease is like whatever. <laughs> she was fine. But I think it's been the perfect excuse to like, oh, they need to go for a walk. I'm like, oh, they get to get out. And then I'm like, wait, this is good for me. Yeah, it is. It is actually really nice to have a dog and feel like you have to go out and yes. walk them. Like that's how I feel too. It's like, if we don't walk later, I feel very guilty. And right. so it forces me even when I don't feel like it. And, or sometimes life just goes, but it is really nice for like getting outside. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I feel like I was just saying, I don't know how Lady's going to react. She's such a freaking diva. And I was telling Leif, we have to start um, neglecting her now. <laughs> um, we need to start giving her less attention because yeah. she is literally the most spoiled. You know, she's all been our right. literal child for years now. And I'm like, she's not going to know what hits her. But I could also see, I could see getting more annoyed of her. Like, mm -hmm. um, once I have the baby, if she's being, like, if she's barking or being annoying, I could picture being like, okay, this is more annoying than it used to be because now I'm like, the baby's asleep or right. something. Like Gus, whenever he wants attention, he'll like put his paw down. And one time he like scratched the baby's face and I blew up on him. And then later on I was like, oh, I'm such a bad mom. Like that's <laughs> my fault. I literally went over I and I was like, I said, take the baby. Like I need to leave with Gus for yes. a few minutes. Aww. I know. Oh my God. But you learn to like figure it out. Yeah. I, I keep telling myself it's just better because I had maybe a borderline unhealthy relationship with my dog before where like the attachment Same. was like not okay. Where my parents yes. would be like, we need to make a plan for when Sophie dies because so Chelsea will not be okay. Like so attached to her. So right. where it's like, she's probably like, dude, like <laughs> I don't away. need, especially the kind of dog she is. She's just not like a lap dog, like super whatever. She's probably she's huge. smothered. Yeah. I mean, she's a mammoth. <laughs> yeah, she's a mammoth. mammoth, of course. <laughs> and so now I feel like I have a more healthy animal human relationship with her where I appreciate our bond. I appreciate, mm -hmm. you know, that she's in our family. She's part of our pack, but I'm not like crying about her death every single night. <laughs> she's you know? still here. <laughs> yeah, she's still here. Exactly. Isaac grew up on a farm. So he didn't, eat, when he was like, Oh, you want a dog? Like, where would we keep it? We don't have a yard. <laughs> Where's the and barn? Like, oh, You're like in bed, sleeping <laughs> in our bed. What do you mean? Between so, us. Yeah. So he always looked at animals as like, oh, it's an animal. Now he's like, okay, that's our literal mm -hmm. child. Yeah. Like, I gave birth to these two dogs and the baby. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, what's what's next for you guys? You guys are moving to Texas very soon, right? Yeah, we're moving to Texas for a few months, um, which I'm excited about, but it's definitely going to be a change. And it's like, oh, I have to already say bye to the house I like brought my baby home in. So that's yeah. an emotional thing. But we're renovating the house. People don't really understand the, like the, uh, us owning two houses, but I grew up in Michigan. Where, You're like, rich. We, <laughs> we're basically like- <laughs> What's we, not, what's not like, clicking? <laughs> we have so much stuff we needed to. <laughs> but um, I grew up in Michigan where people had lake houses. So maybe it's more common like in the Midwest. But we got a house in the middle of nowhere, Texas. I always say Dallas because that's like the closest city, but it's quite a bit from Dallas. It literally is in the middle of nowhere. Um, like the nearest coffee shop is 20 minutes. Mm. So we're really going out there. But uh, we just wanted like a house that was like a getaway. We wanted to like keep for a long time, like spend holidays 
like when the NFL is done. And so with us renovating our house here in California, we were like, okay, are we going to get like pay rent in Orange County? Like that's a lot of money yeah. and you're renovating. <laughs> that's really oh, fun yeah, to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, that would suck. You're stupid if you do that. <laughs> no. That's just a really irresponsible so thing to do. You're I'm like, me. yeah, so we bought a whole new house. <laughs> so we didn't have to pay rent. No. Um, but we were planning to do this and we just wanted, like we, we, ha he has been the NFL. So like we do have money that we want to give back to our families in a way. So like having a house that everybody could always go to, or like if anybody needs to like, wants to move in there, like they totally can. And just having like a place for our families to gather. So we ended up getting a house in Texas and we'll be living there for until our house is done here. And then we'll, oh, nice. we'll, once the NFL is done, we'll just kind of move back, not really move back and forth, but like we'll visit Texas a lot. Yeah. That's so nice. It'll be really nice. Do you yeah. know how long it's going to take to renovate? They said nine months, so I'm assuming a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I um, Our permits took so long to get same approved. And then um, we've like actually started a little more on actual progress and stuff now. But people are like, maybe it'll be done by the time the baby comes. I'm like, girl. You're like, <laughs> it's not going to be like, close. Because are you working with contractors? It will, it will probably be somewhat close, but... Um, yeah, mm -hmm. but they had originally told me, um, six or what did they originally tell me? Like four to six months for the stuff we wanted to do. But then we decided to do an addition and they were like, okay, probably oh. six to eight months. But like, we haven't even really started. started. So I'm like, Ugh. yeah, it's going to be a minute. And you're like, uh, okay. and you guys I, aren't like living in there. So I don't know, like, why have they not started? <laughs> you're like the permits, because oh, the permits, like we're changing so okay. many structural things yep. and we're trying to go about it the like honest right way, because technically right. you could maybe start doing stuff without permits, but then your contractor could get in trouble or like, it right. could just not be good. And, or just like a lot of fines. Yeah, yeah. Fines or things like they do something and then. Like For the contractor us, the, the does something. The took the longest time. I think yes. it took like six months. Yes, it took, it's been like five months. Sheesh. So that's really fun to have to be paying like Double. literally for a house that's just empty. And like yeah, just sitting there. our neighbors were like, oh, make sure that like, you know, cause it kind of looks almost abandoned because like we're, you know, right. we don't live there obviously. And they're like, you want to be careful cause people could like break squat. in or what squat. I'm like, where are they going to sleep? I'm like, this would be worse than outside. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's like destroyed. Mm, yeah. Literally they can destroyed. find a better house to squat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, I truly believe they can do better. Yeah. Um, they're going to literally sleep in the hole in the ground. Like it is <laughs> so destroyed right now. So anyway, yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. Maybe our houses will be done around the same time. Probably. Probably. Yeah. I'm really excited. It. It's funny because we've been like thinking to renovate this house since we bought it. But like the permits took a long time. So now that it's taken so long, I'm like, oh, I want to change this now. I want to change this. They're like, like six more months for the permits. You're I'm like, like <laughs> I don't know. I'm literally going every which way to like, we were thinking about like raising the roof. <laughs> raising the roof. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they were like, oh, that's going to have to like resubmit for permits. I'm like, oh, never mind. Like, let's yeah. just add skylights. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like random things like that, but I'm starting to change my mind. I'm like, are these trends going to be out of style by the time Literally, I do this house? It's been so, like, oh my gosh, yeah. I know. That would be hard. It's, well, your house is already, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff you want to do, but like, it really is already so The gray so floors. Nice. You talk about the gray floors. Yeah. I hate the gray floors. You have gray floors in yours? Yeah. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. You cover them well. Cause I didn't realize <laughs> that. I added a bunch of like beige wood furniture, but that's what I'm That's like the do. number one thing that I made me hate that house. Mm. Where I, like when, before we even started renovating, I was like, maybe we should just switch them out when we live in it. And I was like, was like that's a waste of money. I'm like, ah, oh, okay, the great floor is. So. Yeah. When I, I don't know if we already talked about this, but when I told you I was pregnant, like the phone, like I'm like recording her and then we hug and it like goes down. And it's just like the gray floors. Like Chelsea's talked about how she hates her gray floors. <laughs> and people were commenting like, love the floors. Like literally the video, it's like us crying and hugging and it's just like us talking and it's just the floor. And that was great shot. Had, now I have rugs galore. My husband is like, why do we have so many rugs in here? Like uh, there's just a up. rug that comes to the door. Every week. I'm like, I, I hate these floors. Like we literally have to have a rug everywhere because I don't want to look at the floor. No, that's exactly what I did. And I, I think I just put a lot of stuff in the walls to like make people not look at the floors. <laughs> yeah. We definitely have gray floors. Yeah, what like, the heck? I, I really did not notice that. And mm -hmm. I, that surprised me because I feel like I would. You would have criticized that. them in your I'm head. Like, yeah, I, I would have out. really judged you and not, I wouldn't <laughs> have, have spent like, time oh, another home. peasant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm in good company. <laughs> <laughs> Another millennial, right? <laughs> oh, I truly, yeah. You did, you did something right. Um, well, anything else that we want to talk about? It's been we've already been chatting for a long time. Well, um, no, just 
plug yourself. If they are, are already they already you. came from from <laughs> Ali, <laughs> Allison Kuja. We're gonna give you all... a lot of followers. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Just you wait. It's funny. Um, I, you guys talked about me in an episode like a year ago, and I remember a friend of mine. She was like, "Oh my god, they talked about you," and you were and like, "I'm like, more famous than them." <laughs> So what? Like, have you seen how many followers I have? I was like, no. And then I just, I refused to, like, I used to listen to every episode and I was like, I'm not listening to that. That's so cringy to, like, listen to Please. someone talk about me. Uh, it's like full circle, though. I'm like, finally on the podcast. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I and are you, uh, wait, is this a, are you going to still do your podcast eventually? Or is that, yeah, should we so, not be talking about that? So, <laughs> like, should we, oh exactly. did we quit? Uh, Sunday Sports Club podcast just took a little break because got to wait for the meds to kick <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah. But um, yeah, if you guys like sports, definitely come and listen over there. It's such um, a good idea. Mm -hmm. such I'm a trying good to get idea. Taylor we love Swift hot girls on. In sports. She just oh. hasn't responded. <laughs> so weird. Can you she imagine? To. Wait, has, um, this is my last question for you. Has Kristen Yusek ever made you something? No, she have hasn't. You know she, like, yeah. Have you seen her stuff? Her outfits she are needs to. insane. She needs to make you something. I know. I'm like, Hey, make me something for the Super Bowl. I don't care about your outfit for the yeah. Super Bowl. Make me something. <laughs> I hope you're not busy. Did you see she just got like a deal with the NFL? Yeah, so I think that's cool. so incredible. The NFL social media team is, it's run by a bunch of women, which is really, Slay. yeah, really yeah, funny. That's why it's good. Yeah. That's but why it's good. <laughs> yeah. That's why I laugh yeah. when I see it. But um, it's really cool. Some of the things that like they're pushing for that I feel like the, like owners or like the commissioner like would be like girls in here what yeah, are they doing literally yeah. so it's really cool to see like a trendy group of women running the nfl socials and like that she got to like now she gets to sell her own clothes so yeah wait i love that mm -hmm. i know so have you seen her um stuff i don't i don't know the name but uh, maybe i you, have seen it like taylor swift wore, wore one of her like padded jackets okay, or yeah, puffer yeah. jackets mm -hmm. She's, she does like really cute i designs. did see that and she makes them all she's so cute that's cool it's insane i'm like how do you make I mean, obviously she has like a sewing machine, but yeah, like no, that, I know she's got talent. So this is bringing to close it all off. I just love how it's bringing, you know, a lot of men and women together because I will be <laughs> like, have you ever heard of Kristen Usek? And he's like, oh, juice. I'm like, what? Oh, he's like, like her, oh, her husband? husband. The yeah. reason that people know she is because she's he's in the NFL. He's extremely talented. <laughs> Literally. I'm like, I don't know who Juice is. He's like so talented. I'm like, but Kristen makes clothes. Right, or like Olivia Culpo. And you're like, yes. Oh, or he's like, oh, Christian. He got me so many points on fantasy. I'm like, yeah, but Olivia Culpo. You're like, have you seen her outfits? Yeah. <laughs> it seems exactly. like she's winning. <laughs> like, yeah. Are there any like series about like NFL wives? There used to be one. It was called uh, Wags. It was on E Network. It was horrible. Really? It was. I feel it was like there's so, so much fake. potential there. There is. There's a lot of potential. But people can just tune into your TikTok instead. Yeah, yeah. it's much better. Obviously. Duh. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you. That was very fun. You'll have to come back. Maybe if you can afford. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe once the house. We'll is have done, to save up again. Back for the <laughs> next. This was interview. a really expensive interview for us, so we'll do our best. Um, but if you guys want to watch on YouTube, we didn't even mention that, but you can watch on YouTube. It's what we said podcast. You can follow us on Instagram. It's also at what we said podcast for any updates or if you want to be in, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not invested in the videos. <laughs> no involved. You want to be involved in, um, any future episodes. We love you guys so much. And that's, that's what, what we said. said. Bye. Bye. <laughs>